Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Walters. I'm an assistant professor of communication design at Parsons School of Design, the new school. Um, and I'm excited to present today um, my, my presentation, The Black Experience in Design um, for the CAA Annual Conference and the Design Incubation Colloquium. To start, I wanted to contextualize um, sort of what this presentation is about. I will be talking about a co-edited anthology that I worked on with a few other design educators. Um, and to give context about where it began, um, it started in the summer of 2020. And uh, when I think back to this time now, um, it was a very tumultuous period. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic was raging throughout the United States and globally. Um, there, in the United States in particular, there were senseless killings of Black people, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. Um, the social and political sort of climate was just um, astronomical. And, and there was just so much going on, I think, uh, politically. Uh, and it was through all of this that I, you know, began to reflect on what it meant to be Black um, at that period, as I always do. And I'm always reflecting on this um, as I kind of move through the world. But in particular, given all of the things that were occurring at that time, I was, was really just trying to process. And um, as we moved from the summer into the fall, um, I began to process with um, uh, my design colleagues, my friends. Um, and in particular, I was, was talking a lot with Ann H. Berry, Kareem Kali, Pen Penny Laker, Leslie Ann Knoll, and Jennifer Rittner, um, among some of the folks that I was sort of thinking um, about what it meant to, to sort of be Black, but also to kind of think about it from the, a designer context. And so, you know, in my conversations with this group, um, some of the things that we were thinking a lot about were, what can we do um, that's sort of responding to this time? And how might we respond as designers specifically? Um, so those are some of the key questions that really kind of initiated um, us wanting to do something and to invite participation from the wider design community um, of Black designers um, and thinking about how, how are others navigating um, this period and their own design practice. And I also just want to share too, right, from these questions, uh, we developed a, uh, a working proposal. And I just want to read uh, an excerpt from um, one of our earlier drafts that in addition to the disproportionate impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on communities of color, the worldwide Black Lives Matter protests in the wake of the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor um, that have re-exposed police brutality in the Uni United States, particularly against Black people, um, and has laid bare the pervasiveness of American racism. And as Black design faculty, we represent a range of Black African diasporic perspectives, introspection about our experiences, our career trajectories, our role in academia, and the responsibility we have to educate the diversity of students we encounter has heightened by the political, social, and cultural events of 2020. We too are attempting to process everything we are seeing, hearing, and watching while continuing to stay engaged in our professional practice. And so again, this sort of was um, really a really great sort of example of how we were, as I said, processing, reflecting, thinking, um, and wanting to sort of respond uh, and think about it as, as design faculty. And um, one way that we were sort of considering this project at the outset was whether, should it be a special journal or should it be a book? Um, you know, one, one way of thinking about the journal from, again, all of us as academics, we're sort of thinking about how we would be able to sort of create a special issue um, that could feature case studies or responses from uh, design practitioners. But the more we discussed as a group, the more we were sort of really intent and excited about the idea of doing a book. Um, and we felt that a book had the capacity to be more varied in its content um, and allow folks to sort of enter in from different uh, ways of writing and um, sort of thinking through their own practice. And so in the end, we, we decided to sort of move forward with a book as the, the, the final form. And at this point, um, 
what was happening was that we had bi-weekly editors meetings. We had developed a, a working book proposal. We had sought guidance from different design mentors about what we were hoping to do with this project and as a publication. Um, and then eventually we secured a book contract and we um, were really excited about sort of moving forward at the end of the fall 2020 um, with a, a project that we knew that we would be developing over the next year. And, and then through January through August 2021, um, this was the sort of critical period of sort of the, the kind of gathering of our content for the book. And this took the form of, um, as a group, as an editorial body, establishing thematic content areas that we wanted to see highlighted. Um, we also did initial outreach to contributors um, to sort of think about who might be sort of um, able to reflect on the different themes that we were highlighting. We had uh, weekly sort of writing sessions um, with contributors as well as we were sort of developing the content to invite, uh, basically have space um, to support their writing process because we worked with folks that were both uh, traditionally writers and non-traditional writers um, and also just folks who wanted to participate um, and we felt that it was important to sort of give guidance as we could um, in the development of their projects throughout um, the arc of the year. And then we also just connected with each other on progress. Um, and the tools that we used included Slack, included Zoom. Um, we had a Miro board. Um, we used Google Sheets or tracking all of the different uh, sort of areas of uh, content we were looking at. We used email and we used text messaging. So we were really um, leaning into a lot of these digital tools in order to be able to sort of um, keep in touch, but also to um, keep organized on our process. And as we moved into September through November, um, this became sort of our crunch time, if you will. Um, this is where we began to kind of edit within chapters. Um, we were editing across the entire book, kind of looking at the whole picture. Um, we began book design development with our designer, Renal Poussant, um, and we were just finalizing the overall manuscript. And this was a really important period because um, there were so many decisions that were getting made in terms of, did we have overlap? Were any of the content able to go into one section versus another? Um, you know, this is a screenshot of us kind of talking with each other on the far left, and just some of our kind of inner workings, if you will, of looking at design um, directions that might inspire the sort of trajectory for the book in terms of um, the layout and uh, some of our timelines, everything is due as you can see here. Um, and Anne was critical and sort of as our managing editor really being able to kind of highlight um, and you know corral um, everyone sort of we, as we move through um, our communications with the publisher and also with, with the contributors. And in the end, um, we're super excited that it all sort of came together. This is the front cover of that book um, that is now you know, accessible and out in the world. And just a couple of notes just to highlight about the contents itself. Again, in working with Renault, it was really critical for us to think about how could we design a, um, a book layout that could be comprehensive and expansive of all the different kinds of content that we have, as I mentioned previously, um, because we had long form, more expected sort of like academic essays, we had poems, we had creative writing, we had um, interviews, and it was essential that we have a sort of space that could hold all of that um, sort of diversity of content. And for each chapter, there are um, opening sort of chapter sort of illustrations that Renal designs um, that sort of bring forth uh, an entry into that chapter. And so you'll see sort of the, the graphics sort of circulate through on each of the then sort of like essay uh, openers um, that sort of borrow from that original sort of illustration. And so throughout the book, um, we, you know, were really interested in building and creating um, a concept that could could allow for a variety of hierarchy, as, as I mentioned before, um, thinking about how the titles, how authors, how um, editors, how the body copy, all of the information could be sequenced throughout um, that could be in, interactive and engaging. 
And I think part of the sort of main sort of um, focus too is because the book was primarily black and white as one of our constraints, um, we were really interested in how the type would be able to kind of move through the page. And so, you know, I'm thankful in working with, with Renal Boussant um, on this project um, alongside Anne um, as, and the rest of the sort of editorial team, um, because again, we were in dialogue with each other about what would work, um, how might we evolve the sort of context of, of the layout. And, you know, through Moreau, through Slack, through all of our channels, we were able to kind of share progress and sort of feedback for each other about um, the evolution of the book. And so with that, I, I just say I'm really thankful again for the opportunity to share about this project and, um, you know, here are just some of the screenshots of, of the book now circulating, um, as you see on social media. Um, and then if you do have more questions or are interested in the, in the project itself, um, we have a website that we developed as well called Black Experience in Design. And there's a list of resources um, that we have also compiled um, that are just, I would say, an extension of the book. And so we acknowledge um, the folks that have supported us, the Kickstarter that we were also able to develop. Um, so definitely please check that out if you're interested in learning more about um, the project. And with that, um, thank you so much for your time and for listening.